Hi Ali, hope this email finds you well. My name is Julia and I taught at YTTP many years ago. We have that connection in common. I'm reaching out to you because I'd like to dispel some incorrect, inf incorrect knowledge and personal opinion that I believe you are mistaking for truth. You say, I was vegan for a few months. This is incorrect. Perhaps you were attempting a plant-based diet, but veganism isn't just not eating meat. That would be a dietary choice. Veganism is an ethical stance that humans actively choose to move from. Being vegan has nothing to do with diet. Being vegan means you recognize the suffering of all beings and you are consciously deciding to not add to it and to move forward, to move towards, excuse me, it. Whether you eat potato chips or kale or beer or water or fruit is your own food preference. In other words, veganism requires personal responsibility and is not concerned with personal preference. You claim the following to be truth. Some people are not meant to be vegan. This is like saying some people aren't not meant to be ethically conscious. As yogis, we recognize that our special and rare human incarnation is exactly meant for evolving our consciousness and decidedly moves us towards becoming ethically aware. Ahimsa is literally the first order of business as it relates to practicing yogis. So I'd like to suggest that all people are meant to be vegan. Number two, being vegan is a way of life. Here we agree. Similar to yoga, it is a way of viewing the world, of seeing the light, of understanding ourselves and one another. Number three, I can't tell others to be vegan. Right on. It's like you... It's like you can't tell others to practice yoga, but as a yoga teacher, you should encourage, support and guide people towards it, in good faith and with love in your eyes, hands and speech. 4. Health has no label. This all depends on our definition of health. I see health as the ability to return home. Our health is especially challenged when we are in disease, pain, ignorance, confusion, attachment, aversion. The ability to remove, pardon me, to return to homeostasis, to balance, to ease, to our true nature, is health. I guess I'm not sure what you meant by this statement, but I gather you're suggesting that each person has to discover what foods and herbs and nutrients are right for them, including emotional, psychosomatic, mental, etc. If so, I couldn't agree more, and yes, it's a lifelong discovery. I hope this doesn't close you off or shut you down. You clearly have many offerings for this world. I hope I was able to shed some light from my corner of the universe. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Unwellness Community Podcast. This week, I'm going to be talking about how I feel there is an unhealthy promotion of veganism in the wellness community. I feel as though, as somebody who has been vegan, and I stand by that, because my choice to be vegan stemmed from health and stemmed from my wanting, quote unquote, the world to be a better place. I, through trial and error, and a lot of people have said to me, oh, you probably weren't healthy enough, trust me. I was a health coach at the time. I was very, very healthy. I ate and I cooked most of my food. I ate mostly foods that I cooked from the ground, or, and I limited a lot of my junk food. In fact, there was a time I didn't even really eat junk food. So, I just want to go through how I feel 
like I reached to the breaking point of my veganism journey. Now, I wrote an article about this about three years ago, and I received a response from a fellow peer in my industry. Her name was Julia. I don't want to give her her last name because I don't think she's that important, but she sent me this very passive aggressive email that I wrote the beginning that I read excuse me at the beginning of this podcast so when I first received that email I was willing to be open because I genuinely like feedback in fact I get feedback a lot and as long as the person is not condescending being judgmental or being rude I'm so open to hearing it but it's when it comes from this place of I know everything you know nothing that is an off put and that was the tone that I received from this email I have found not all but a lot of people who adopt a vegan lifestyle plant-based lifestyle whatever you call it because I think it varies from person to person and that's something I think the vegan community needs to sort out but I strongly strongly believe that there is a condescending nature in a lot of vegans to people who have chosen to not be vegan anymore or who have chosen to eat meat consistently. I am a licensed and certified health coach so I'm not going to sit here and say that eating meat is best for you or not eating meat is best for you. That's up to you. Health is in your hands I can't tell you I know better for you than you do for yourself you know your body and I strongly stand behind not everybody is meant to be vegan it's very interesting to me that a lot of yogis will push this whole idea that all yogis are meant to be vegan when yoga originated from India And in India, from the Hindu religion, most still have dairy products that are derived from animals. So they are not considered vegans. And I find it very interesting that this is a very Western culture aspect. And it comes across very condescending to people who have lineage in uh, Hinduism, in yoga, that they can decide that they are that they are the know-it-alls of yoga which is has been going on for thousands and thousands of years so for example ghee which is spelt g-h-e-e is clarified butter with herbs and is meant to cure a lot of ailments that is not vegan but is a staple in Hinduism, maybe not the religion, but in a lot of practices that yoga complements. So I find it very, very hypocritical and almost condescending that as Western culture has adopted yoga, a lot of yoga teachers specifically will push veganism on their students, but don't acknowledge that where yoga came from, where where it stemmed from, They are not vegan themselves. So the reason why I wanted to do this was I just wanted to break down my journey, how I felt pushed to be vegan, and why I am no longer vegan, or plant-based lifestyle, whatever you want to call it. I started out, in the beginning, I started out searching for I would say answers when I decided to be vegan. This was about 2012. Uh, Yeah, it was around 2012. I had, throughout my life, I've really mostly stuck to being pescatarian. Sometimes vegetarian, on and off, but mostly pescatarian because meat, particularly red meat, and my body doesn't agree with me. I often feel heavy. I feel bloated and I've always taken that as a sign that I shouldn't be eating meat. So I've stuck to pescatarian for most of my life. As I have stuck to being pescatarian, I decided after watching a lot of documentaries, which I'll do a go through, I'll do a run through of, 
after watching these documentaries, I kind of felt like guilty. I felt the sense of guilt for eating animals. And after I felt that guilt, I decided to, over time, eliminate any kind of eggs, any kind of fish, and I just went completely vegan. And to counteract or to oppose what she condescendingly wrote to me in that email, I made sure it was a lifestyle. So I didn't have any leather, I didn't eat honey, I was very conscious about this. So, the first documentary that I watched that really, really stuck with me was Food Inc. And it goes through a bunch of different reasons as to why the meat industry is such a monopoly and why it has an effect on the American diet. Now, I didn't grow up in America, so I feel as though I had the fortune of not because I wasn't inclined to eat meat as the main foundation of my food. I'm not saying that all Americans, particularly in the US, do, but that's just what I've noticed about the diet. It seems very meat-based. So over watching a lot of these, I must say, particularly with Food Inc., I definitely became emotional watching some of these documentaries quest for the truth continued i had this urge and desire to be a better human in fact i almost felt guilty about it and through that guilt i became that version of a vegan that is kind of condescending can be rude sometimes because i believed it was for the betterment of humanity that I could tell others what they should be eating, what they shouldn't be eating, and how I no longer ate meat, and I was a better person for it. I was so much of a better person for it that I alienated a lot of people that were close to me because I was being condescending and judgmental. And once I recognized that within myself, I also could see how others were doing it. I got to the point that I realized that if I am being this condescending, rude, judgmental vegan, that opposes the lifestyle that I wanted to create. And that is one of non-harming ahimsa. If we value life so much, animals included and humans, there is no need to speak to one another in a rude, way because that can be perceived as violence as a form of violence if we claim as yoga teachers to be these people that are enlightening others we're not going to do so by sending one another condescending emails and harshly judging each other so i decided to really take a look at what got me to that journey I continued to be vegan, I would say, for the next six months or so. And even though I ate well, even though I was supplementing myself with vitamins, taking care of myself, eating a lot, because I would burn through way more food than I would if I ate fish or eggs like I was used to. I got to the point where I was just so fatigued. In the beginning when I went vegan, I was feeling light, strong. But three or four months in, I started to lose color in my face. I started to really look sick. So because I looked and felt sick, I decided to go to the doctor. I went to a traditional doctor. She said I was fine and that my fatigue would go away. It didn't go away for the next two months. So I went to see an Ayurvedic doctor, which if you don't know about Ayurveda, it is basically like the sister to yoga. It is, and I'm just doing a quick run through of it. So I encourage you to do your own research on what Ayurveda is. Ayurveda is, it's kind of like a science 
where you use your constitution that you're born with. So you have fire, water, earth, air elements. I'm sorry, fire, water, air elements. And through these elements, you see what you should be eating or not. As I went through, as I went to this doctor, she was so wonderful. She said to me, you really shouldn't be vegan. And when she said that to me, as somebody who herself practices yoga, comes from a history of yoga. In fact, I'm sure that her family, because she is Indian from India, and she said herself that she practices, she was taught by her parents to practice. It's a part of her lifestyle. When she gave me that permission to no longer be vegan, I felt so much better by myself. And she said, for some of us, we just can't. And I felt so relieved. She wrote down things that I should be eating. And I had a stomach issue too. She helped me overcome this guilt that I needed to fit into the yoga industry by being a vegan. It felt really, really refreshing. Because she's one of the few yogis I've met from yoga, who from India, excuse me, who enlightened me in one way or another so it was very very encouraging and I went on to adopt the diet she suggested of which I still for the most part follow, follow today and my stomach issues disappeared I felt so much better and no longer had fatigue and I decided to stop judging myself Stop judging myself and stop judging others for pe- for things that, yes, we can be mindful about it, but we don't have to judge one another about what we eat and what we do because that is the antithesis of yoga. So as I went on to become a health coach, I became certified, I went through school, I did a year of schooling that I would never take back. I would, graduated through the Institute of Integrative Nutrition in 2016 excuse me 2015 <laughs> can't believe time has flown this much but what I learned completely changed my mind through that program and I'm not selling anything I don't like to do that but something that I learned from becoming a health coach was bio individuality that everybody is different and we all have different needs and we all have different ways of getting to the same root. Basically like in yoga, you know, when you practice a form of yoga, you don't want to be rude or condescending to somebody that practices another because that is not your place to say. And as I learned more and more about different diets, microbiotic, I tried all of them because you have to in that program. And I still have stuck to the Ayurvedic. Sometimes I go by my blood type. I eat by my blood type. Which is kind of similar. Which is very interesting. But I learned that all this judgment and all this needing to fit into a cookie cutter type diet is really a waste of time. If we all feel healthy, strong and are mindful about what we eat. So not saying we eat all the meat in the world not saying we eat from unhealthy places and antibiotics within their meat and so forth and so forth and that's what I mean about me being mindful buying from sustainably farmed and just taking care of our bodies not necessarily having a label attached to it but having more of a feeling a vibration a high vibration frequency than needing to follow a specific diet a specific lifestyle and follow exactly what somebody else tells us to do and I remember one day when um, I was watching a video of our lecturer Joshua Rosenthal he and I'm paraphrasing totally basically said that it, everybody's bodies are so unique we can't force one person to respond to a specific diet that we would because that is how unique each of us are and he said as a health coach our responsibility is to guide people and to acknowledge that their bodies know best so 
this was such a dramatic shift from me coming from a lot of yoga places where you follow what they say and that's it it was now time for me to learn about myself to heal to heal the real way not just to be told what to do but really feel it in my body feel it in my soul feel it in the things that I did what I connected with how it would reach others how it felt within me it was going to be a journey and I remember him saying too that health is a journey it's not a destination and I think when we look at it like that it frees us up of needing to put on a face or needing to push a diet on us so I think it was really important to do this for me because I feel like I see a lot of unhealthy promotion of veganism is often attached to weight loss, attached to non-violence, attached to all these things that other people have decided is the best for them and they want to push on other people. So I just want to leave you with this. Is it best for you? Do you feel best when you eat eggs? Do you feel best when you eat meat and balance it out with vegetables? How do you feel your strongest? And I don't want you to answer that based on what you think somebody else might think. I want you to be honest about that. I saw the other day somebody said, I was watching because I was doing research about documentaries, about um, foods. And I saw this woman, she said her healthiest, because she comes from Scandinavian blood, her healthiest is when she eats raw meat and fish. She doesn't even eat veggies. And that sounds completely absurd to some people. It sounds like, how can you not eat veggies? We're told we're meant to eat veggies. But if it works for her, who are we to say that we, that she's doing something wrong? So it's very important to me that I think we drop the judgment in wellness. We drop the finger wagging. The talking down to. That I know best, you know nothing. Because maybe we don't. And the best teachers are students. Not those who elevate themselves above others and are untouchable. But those who are learning, continually learning. And humble themselves enough to speak to people in a respectful manner. Next week, I have something very exciting coming up, so I hope you stay around. Please subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Please subscribe if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, or follow on Spotify. And I'd love to hear what you have to say, so please write a five-star review if you liked it. Or be honest, write a review, write a comment. Take care.